the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Life can change very quickly. A little over a year ago, we were traveling around the world and even around this country with less restrictions. Wearing masks was not considered a normal part of attire. We were not taking our temperature or having it taken on almost a daily basis, and hand sanitizer was certainly not considered a necessity. Now, as we began moving toward a time with less COVID restrictions, as more and more people become vaccinated and the spread of this dread virus diminishes, we will move on to whatever is to be the next phase of life. Things changed rather quickly the week we heard about in the reading in our opening liturgy. People were lining the streets, spreading their cloaks on the road and waving branches as Jesus entered Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. The Gospel of John says that the crowds took branches of palm trees. The people were shouting, Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Hosanna is translated as save, please. This is from the 25th verse of Psalm 118. The temple in Jerusalem was the place to worship in Jesus' day. Jews would travel long distances to celebrate the festivals in Jerusalem. There were 15 psalms from Psalms 120 to 134 that pilgrims prayed as they journeyed to Jerusalem. They are called the Psalms of Ascent or Shir Hama'alath, which literally means Song of the Ascents. These Psalms are also named, known as the Great Hallel. The phrase Hallelujah, praise the Lord, shows up frequently in these psalms. Psalm 118 was from the group of five psalms known as the Hallel, one of the five psalms from Psalms 113 to 18, and pilgrims would sing these on the way to Lamb Selection Day, which in the first century AD, the priest would chant during the sacrifice of the Paschal, or Passover lambs in the temple. The second half of verse 26 of Psalm 118 reads, We bless you from the house of the Lord, which was originally understood to confer a blessing on the pilgrims as they made their way to Jerusalem. As a part of the Hallel, or Jewish prayer, Psalm 118 would have been chanted every morning by the temple choir during the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also known as Sukkot, or the Festival of Booths, also during the Feast of Dedication and the Passover Festival. At the very least, during the Feast of Tabernacles and perhaps other feasts, when they got to verse 25 of Psalm 118, men and boys would wave branches when the choir sang, Hosanna. The custom of waving branches, especially palm branches, was commonplace during times of great rejoicing or to welcome heroes back from battle. This practice is prescribed in Leviticus 2540 as part of the rejoicing during the festival of booths. According to tradition, this practice could date back as early as the pre-monarchic period or the 12th century BCE. This form of rejoicing is well documented throughout scripture, so it was not unusual for someone as popular as Jesus to be greeted in this way. Word about Jesus spread because of his miraculous healings and the feeding of so many people with such scarce amounts of food. His popularity and notoriety had soared with the raising of Lazarus from the dead an odd situation whereby an act of mercy was rejected by the chief priests and the Jewish authorities and distorted to be as used as motive, 
to be used as motivation and justification to kill not only Jesus, but also Lazarus. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the writer of the Gospel of Mark had the crowd shouting the lines from Psalm 118, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, a phrase that would have been well known to pilgrims entering Jerusalem. And then Mark adds, blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Of course, Jesus is the ancestor of King David, and his kingdom is about to be ushered in. The problem is that the crowd is expecting their Messiah, their king, to be a warrior like David. They want their king to come with military might and overthrow the Roman occupiers so that they can have control over their own land and their way of life. Rather than enter Jerusalem in a chariot or riding a war horse, Jesus entered on the back of a donkey, which was a sign of peace rather than war. The people had been expecting the Messiah for centuries. The prophecy from Zechariah reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Their Messiah would be one who is humble and brings peace. He is the Prince of Peace. His kingdom is not of this world. What he values is very different from what the world values. And we who accept and claim his and him as Lord and Savior of our lives are to follow in his footsteps and value what he values. We are to strive to be like him. We are to let him live in us as we live in him. The Apostle Paul tells the church in Philippi exactly how we are to be. We are to let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, we are to see the world as Christ sees the world. He wants us to love as he loves, forgive as he forgives, and serve as he serves. He wants us to have the attitude and humility of Christ. Listen to Paul's example of Christ's humility. Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus is God incarnate. He humbled himself. He stooped down to become one of us. Our Lord's personal identify, identity is immutable, but he emptied himself, divested himself of his own self-interest, and he did it out of love for each one of us. He, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipotent, took the form of a slave. He obeyed the Father even unto death and served others. There is no better example of humility and a selfless attitude than Jesus, our Lord. Christ, while retaining the essence of God, was also human. He was fully God and fully human. He did everything right to allow his glory and splendor to shine forth, but he surrendered that privilege in his incarnate state. Christ's obedience was followed by the Father's exalting him to the place of highest honor, 
so that at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The sadness that we must face is that things do change quickly. These same people who were lining the road with their cloaks, waving branches and yelling, Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, were in all probability some of the same people who within that same week would yell, Crucify him! Crucify him! How many times have you resolved to follow Jesus and live your life following his teachings and within days, if not hours, you are back to doing the very things you had decided you would no longer do? Paul knew this only too well when he wrote in Romans 7:15, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Are the things you say, or maybe the things you email, text, or post on social media consistent with having the mind of Christ? We just heard a tragic story of injustice and death that changed the world. God can and will bring the greater good from even the darkest moments of this life. The blessed hope for all of us is that no matter how many times we fail to follow Jesus in the myriad of ways that we do, he is always willing, ready, and able to forgive us. He loves us as he atoned for our sins on that old rugged cross over 2,000 years ago so that those who choose to follow him, repent of their sins, and turn back to him may live eternally in the love, joy, and peace that only he can provide. Amen.